many people wouldn't have watched Oppenheimer if it didn't release at the same time as Barbie? And maybe the answer is to make your cinema releases events. I think generally people get attracted to stuff that you can make memes out of. Welcome back to another brand episode of Two Please. Uh, I'm your host Abhin, and I'm your co-host Rohit. Rohit, this episode didn't happen, right? Like, I, I, like I'm having a what case is this like... deja vu? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, so we recorded a version of this episode be- because of internet issues and streamyard issues. We've had to like redo this again. So we will try and keep this conversation as fresh and as fun as possible. I'm sure that it won't be a, a problem, but. We've had issues, and <laughs> if you want to see that episode, I'll set up a Patreon. Maybe this is a good idea to show uncut content. Uh, there's some weird voice glitches also that happened while we were setting this up, so that we've recorded a bit of that as well. So maybe that could live there. So uh, this episode, once again, we have a guest, a guest that is personally very special to me, especially from a podcasting perspective. We have Aniket Dasgupta uh, on the episode today. He's an editor. He's a film director. He's created his own documentary. He ran a studio for a very long time. He ran a forget studio. Even going further back to his college days, he ran a magazine that was very popular in the in the college spaces called Diffuse. In his agency, High, uh, High Ninja, was produced content for both brands as well as um, podcast pieces. One of the first few podcasts I ever appeared on was on Aniket's uh, platform called the Cultcast. It's a very fun episode of the three of us uh, and and Kanan Gill. If you before he became Kanan oh, yeah. Gill on it, before he uh, became Kanan Gill, yeah, yeah. Like so, there are uh, we've we've been doing this for a very long time, and uh, <laughs> this episode, funnily enough, has been what in the works for the ever since Two Please first began. And we finally managed to put some time down and uh, he's here. So please welcome Aniket to the show. Hey, thank you. And uh, just saying, because uh, we already tried to do this once uh, to the listeners here, I offered Abhin a solution where I would just act out my parts again. This is what <laughs> these two gentlemen were saying. So we have really put in a lot of effort into this episode. Clearly. Yeah, now the and thanks for the wonderful doubled. introduction, man. <laughs> but it was really nice to have you. I mean, tech tech issues aside, the first conversation you had was really nice. I'm sure this one is going to get even better because I feel like we're more like after yesterday's free flowing conversation. I feel like we have more points that we've left on that yes. we left on the table that yes. we'll be bringing back for this one. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, actually, this is the whole topic was. Um, Aniket's suggestion and uh, it, at some degree Abhin and I have always consciously uh, or subconsciously been discussing right and I, in fact Aniket was mentioning in yesterday's conversation how he could see those threads come across a lot of our episodes right and uh, uh, what we're talking about is of course uh, whether streaming is good or bad for cinema in the larger picture right or in the longer run and uh, what we're going to try and do is try and break this subject down in from a few angles, uh, you know, try and frame those angles into questions and uh, structure our discussion around it. That said, if any of us want to go places, obviously we will go to those places and then try and reel the conversation back to that larger, uh, whatever, you know, the structure of it. That's, that's what we're going to talk about. I'm sure all of us uh, listeners, all of you listeners have an opinion on this. This is something that uh, you know, otherwise the movies that we discuss, Abhin and I discuss, we someone may or may not have watched them. So it's not always necessary that they relate to it. But this is a topic, you know, streaming is so ubiquitous. It, uh, all of us, I'm sure, have an opinion, right? I don't know how strong or weak that opinion could be. But uh, I'm guessing this is going to be a lot more relatable to everyone. So yeah, with that, let's start the show. So, uh, Aniket and I have been talking about this topic for quite some time and it was brought into sharp realization over a couple of weeks ago because the Mad Max film Furious are released to global cinemas and has absolutely tanked at the box office and in spite of being reviewed well, in spite of having good buzz and good word of mouth online. Uh, Similarly, the case for another big budget film like Fall Guy. Generally, the summer blockbuster hasn't been doing well. The one outlier to this situation is the Will Smith star of Bad Boys 
Ride or Die uh, with Martin Lawrence. That seems to be making its budget back and is proved to be quite the hit. Clearly, people don't care much about Will Smith's <laughs> stupidity. But it really brought an interesting point of the fore, right, as to what people, what kind of films people keep going to cinemas for. Is it, we've we've had the superhero conversation in the past, we've had, now we're in this remake territory. What does this mean for original IPs? I haven't watched most of the films uh, that you just mentioned. I haven't watched uh, Furiosa yet. I don't know if I'm going to watch it. I haven't watched Bad Boys yet. I don't think I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I did watch Fall Guy and I really liked Fall Guy and I thought it was an original IP and all of that stuff. Turns out it's it's uh, loosely adapted from something. Uh, I yes. think a TV show from the 1970s. Mm-hmm. What a good movie. But why? I don't understand why it didn't do well at all. Like it, it had all the elements. I mean, it had last year's biggest movies second lead, which is uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Uh, Ryan G. We still did not get to see that movie do amazingly well. And if you watch it, like it's it's like a cinema watchers or a cinema filmmakers like wet dream. Like it has all the all the trappings of that major summer blockbuster. Yet it has a cohesive storyline for how like however ridiculous you might think it is. The story still makes sense. To, uh, I mean, I've seen. Movies with thinner plot lines and that, and I've really enjoyed it. But I, I was kind of shocked that Challengers uh, did better than this. I think they released around the same time. Yeah, I, I'm and and, I, and I'm fully taken aback with Furiosa because that's a movie that I've been looking forward to watch. But I checked recently on the uh, movie app to see where I can watch a movie. It's out of most of the theaters, and I didn't think it'll go out so fast. It just mm. blows my mind. I actually have a, a question to both of you, right? I mean, this, this is the thought that just came to my mind between our last recording and this one. But uh, so Amazing. a similar a similar uh, discussion was happening on, uh, you guys must have heard of this podcast, The Big Picture. It's part of the Ringer uh, mm-hmm. podcast network where they had a similar discussion, you know, four new ways that we'll be watching movies going forward. And uh, a point that was raised in that discussion was what is the age group that is going to the cinemas? today right hey, and and the kind of movies that uh, are so what is the correlation between the kind of movies that get released and the ones that work against the sort of age that is going right maybe bad boys work because to, it's people in their 20s who are primarily your theater goes and they are up for that sort of content while fall guys again i've not watched it yet i am i mean to uh, but what I've heard is the content is a little more mature. By mature, I mean it's a, it has a bit more depth. It uh, it needs a little bit more involvement from your end. So yeah. it's maybe targeted for people more in their 30s uh, as opposed to in their 20s. And maybe there is some correlation there as well, right? As you get older, the effort, financial outlay as well as time effort of going to the cinema, that equation maybe doesn't make sense as you're getting older and you're maybe more, uh, you know, open to watching it at home. And maybe a lot of, bunch of people were like, hey, this looks cool. I'm just going to wait for it to come on VOD or come on streaming, right? Oh, yeah. That, that, could be that, that, that could be a, a dynamic at play. I have cancelled no, so many movie plans just saying that, that I'm going to watch it later when it comes yeah. out. Yeah. It has yeah. happened to all of us. Even Fall, I, mean, I don't know if that argument holds true for the case of a movie like Fall Guy, which generally, like Aniket mentioned, had the second lead of probably the biggest film last year. Is it a case yeah. of having too much of him around? Because that could probably make sense because he was he everywhere. He, he had the Oscars was like the big crowning Ken moment. It's more, it's, it's kind of ironic that he's taken over a film <laughs> about, about Barbie, right? Like he's become yeah, the like, centerpiece of most conversations. Yeah. So and having watched Fall Guy, it's a very breezy watch. It's like a, an ode to the stuntman, to the Hollywood stuntman, right? That's basically what this movie is about. And it has this, it's like it's John Wick, but, but for cinema. If that no, but think about sense. it, right? The, the From what I, again, I'm second-hand information, but from what I've read, the movies that it's referencing, the tropes, the, the in-jokes that are there in the Fall Guy, are they hearkening back to movies that pe- people who are in their 20s today would have watched? Would the TikTok generation have watched? If they're not going to get I those jokes, so. are they going to buy into the movie? I mean, they they one of the the negative character of Fall Guy is basically a guy based on Tom Cruise. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's very obviously there, but yeah, I don't think it's Bad Boys level 
uh, kind of a movie. I don't want to use a <laughs> word there, but uh, bad boys are bad. No, I think uh, Fall Guys as a film, uh, Fall Guy as a film. Like, I was like, I, I, I think it's what Abhin said. Like, I think Mr. Ryan G has been overextended Over-exposed. everywhere. Where, yeah, he's becoming like Mr. Ryan R. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, where oh, yes. you forget uh, that he's playing a character and you yeah, just yeah, yeah. see him as the actor. And I, I didn't see Ryan Gosling's character in this. I'm like, oh, this is one of the Kens. Like that was me throughout <laughs> the whole movie. So I totally get that. But again, I don't see that being the reason people not paying money to watch this in the theaters. That is something doesn't connect. I, if I was smart enough, I would be making a lot of money today. Uh, I clearly don't understand what is happening over there. But that also doesn't explain why Bad Boys is doing well. Like, hmm. Will Smith and the <laughs> other guy. Exactly. Martin exactly. I, yeah. Martin Lawrence is a person nobody in today's generation, the like so-called TikTok generation even knows about. Like, I don't yeah. think they know who Martin Lawrence is. Apart he from those memes. Where Martin, they like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know who, the, who he was. Like, I, I had to like recollect. And I am older. I am in, in my 30s. And <laughs> Uh, I got to know about Martin Lawrence from all the TikTok and Instagram, uh, the you know, all the conspiracy theories about how he's completely lost his mind and all of that. And yeah. that's how I got to know about him, not from other things. I'm just thinking, coming back to your question, right? Um, which is what what does this what does the rise of streaming mean for the future of original IP in cinemas? Maybe the answer is the. the some some you know the larger question is in what we kind of breezed past right which is how how do you make that equation make sense for the customer which is to say the time and effort and the money that i'm going to put how is it going to be worthwhile right and maybe the answer is to make your cinema releases events like barbenheimer is a classic case study right perfect yeah. in isolation think about it oppenheimer is like a very moody almost 3 hour piece about the guy who made the atomic bomb Yes, it has Nolan's name attached to it, but it's a very unknown like movie in many ways, right? True. On its own, how many people would otherwise have queued up to watch a biopic about Robert Oppenheimer, which unless you're in the Manhattan project, you know, unless you're in that scene, you're interested, not sure how many people outside America would even know about him, right? Or even take the case of Barbie, which on the face of it is a tough sell, right? It, I mean, growing up, there have Barbie been enough Barbie movies. Overtly, yeah. yeah. And it used to come with its set of connotations to try and sell that to a, you know, across genders, right? It, on paper, sounds like a fairly difficult proposition. But because of this whole Barbenheimer, you know, it, the whole thing started from, you know, oh my God, they're going to be on the same weekend. Are they going to uh, clash and, you know, cannibalize each other's business? But I don't know who came up with the idea, but it was a stroke of genius to say, hey, why do they have to cannibalize, right? Why can't we make this an event? Where it's a double feature. You go and watch both. It doesn't have to be either or. And just it, it just caught on, right? This whole Barbenheimer phenomenon. And I feel that making that whole weekend an event really helps both these movies do, do well. So maybe that's what like your studios need to think about. If we're going to give this movie a theatrical release, making it an event where people are like, oh, I'm going to do this as an activity, not just, you know, I'm going to drag myself to watch this movie. Is the way that equation makes sense to people. Maybe. I see your point. Like, I'm going to be the full stereotype of three men on a podcast talking about Taylor Swift. But yeah, Taylor Swift kind of (laughs) created this entire thing, right? Like, where uh, when you go to a Taylor Swift concert, you don't go to a Taylor Swift concert. You go to a Taylor Swift experience where you dress up according to, uh, you know, influenced by her different clothes from her different eras eras and -hmm. and her different uh, tour, uh, era, era stores, clothes. Wow. Uh, But yeah, that's exactly what Barbenheimer became. Like I went to a movie theater and I did uh, Oppenheimer on the first day. And I think a few hours later, I was supposed to do Barbie, but I just couldn't because there was a huge crowd and there were literally people who had come in pink and people who were trying to do the whole double feature thing. So they had worn pink clothes, which also could go as the whole, uh, the Oppenheimer part of the Barbenheimer uh, clash. (laughs) I was stuck. Like, this is insane. Like, people don't... Like, usually, people reserve stuff some stuff like that for, like, superhero movies or, like, uh, yeah. Star Wars. But, you know, where you go dressed as a character or you go dressed influenced by things. But, yeah, it's so true that event viewing has 
come in and changed uh, how we watch movies. Like people have watched Oppenheimer twice, and I'm like, why? Like <laughs> uh, there is a very very obvious audience base which I thought would love watching him. That's the you know it's a Venn diagram of engineers, Indians. Christopher Nolan fan uh, <laughs> likes nuclear energy. It's a very very small Venn diagram, but apart from that very core audience. I don't know why anyone would want to watch that film multiple times. That way in a movie theater, dressed up as something, somebody who is, you know, in at some point of time, annihilated like an entire nation uh, or part <laughs> of it rather. I I don't I didn't get it. Like I just didn't get the hype. I did not like Oppenheimer obviously because <laughs> I think it was very very uh, cross. But and mm-hmm. I enjoyed Barbie. If that doesn't come through, I really mm-hmm. like Barbie. So. I got the hype for Barbie. I got all of that. I wouldn't watch Barbie on streaming at all. I wouldn't enjoy it. I would. I think it was more of a theatrical experience that you want people to like. You want to see what other people around you are doing while watching that. With Oppenheimer, I really wish I watched it at home because there are parts of it where I'm just like, oh god, this is a man I looked up to so much at one point. I'm talking about Nolan. Uh, this is a man I looked up to so much. At one point, I what is he doing? I totally you see know. the double feature thing. It's really Oppenheimer. No, but like it wouldn't have. Let me just put it simply: as many people wouldn't have watched Oppenheimer if it didn't release at the same time as Barbie. Maybe Barbie Fair. people would have still watched because it's a yeah. younger people's movie. But not many people would have watched uh, watched uh, Oppenheimer for sure. I, I see. I still think uh, having had major issues with the with the cult of Nolan for a very very long time, uh, I. Personally, I'm on your for, side now, Ben. I'm on your <laughs> side. I have no, no. So I have here's, here's the thing. This is probably the first, and this is again goes against the entire grain. I liked Oppenheimer a lot compared to both of us. have done like, an episode yeah. about why Oppenheimer deserved best picture. We both loved it, but anyway, yeah. differing opinion. Yeah. I still I told stand you, by what you engineer <laughs> Nolan fan. Not <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, in the Venn diagram. I, know, I feel uh, called out. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. yeah it's it could be anyway. Oh, but, wow, Albert uh, Einstein is on screen. Yeah, great. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what? What I really so I liked it, and I didn't do the Barbenheimer double feature. I did the Rockenheimer double feature, right? Which was uh, uh, I watched Rocky or Rani, <laughs> Prem Kani, and then I watched Oppenheimer the next day. <laughs> After that, you know, wow, the silence. That now that was an Rocky event. Rani. I love Rocky hmm. or Rani, by the way. Just saying. By its own piece, yeah. And then imagine it's, going. It's, it's, it's stellar cinema, okay? As a Bengali, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh yes, oh, of course. How could I forget? Of I don't know if is stuck yeah. or he's just judging us. Oh no, he's fine. No, I'm just judging you. No, no, he's judging. <laughs> he's like, wow, what? Why am I doing this anymore? Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I think like I like the idea of you know having like a build up to it. And I, Bollywood for the longest time used to do stuff like this. I remember back in 2008 they launched two stargates together. It was like an event piece. It was uh, I think they they launched what Imran Khan and uh, Harman Bhavaja launched on the same weekend, right? They what? did. What? Yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah, Jani Tu Ya Janina and Love Story 2050. Love back Story to back. 2050. Which Who was remembers like, Love Story 2050 now? <laughs> I do because I watched the fucking movie in, the, in theaters. Yeah, but okay, that's a different story altogether. So we went for Jani Tu Ya Janina, which kind of like skyrocketed, you know, and then Love Story 2050 by the Sunday. It was very apparent it wasn't the best. And then, so these, these kind of... It wasn't the best. Understatement. It wasn't the best. Century. Nice. There's a line. There's a line in there where Harman Lohaja says, "I don't need luck. I have love." That tells you everything you need to know about this movie. <laughs> Thank God he had money. Stop talking about 2050 and can move. Yeah. Get your point. I think half the audience is just gone. <laughs> they're like, "Yeah, they left." Why? They're like, "No." <laughs> no, no. We'll get to this. There is. There are some. Truly, like a, a true treasure trove of the of Bollywood shit fest that I've sat through. We, we will have an entire episode dedicated to that. But yeah, anyway, I'm coming, coming I mean, <laughs> coming, yeah, we're done, done for sure. <laughs> uh, coming back to the, uh, coming back to the to the main point. So I think because of whenever stuff like this happens, that communal experience, that that wanting to be a part of a movement that is really into it. I feel like it, it happened with Dune to a certain degree because, you know, people were shouting, Lisan al and uh, just, you yeah. know, being and just screaming things in the theater, the Dune soundtrack, everything. It was a lot of memeable content. I think generally people get attracted to stuff that you can make memes out of or that has some sort of a cultural relevance 
outside of the cinema scope i've just stumbled on to the point right now because it just came to me as with regards to how what how barbie and oppenheimer got memed to shit similarly with dune anything that has any sort of uh, what do you call success meme potential has needs to have some meme potential like it has to be and it's so sad <laughs> i mean it's come down to this is just so sad <laughs> i i just think it's our age uh, showing through and we feel sad about it because i've thought about this uh, was right now all your platforms are hiring meme agencies there are meme market agencies and yeah, yeah, yeah. since uh, most of us here are marketers also yeah, yeah. Uh, meme marketing is big man like and without that you can't do much and uh, i am learning about so many movies through memes and i'm i hate to be that guy but there are a lot of south indian movies that i living in bombay having a certain friend group which is completely different from my bangalore friend group i wouldn't come to know about it unless i saw that meme which goes like this like this with fat fasal fasal just doing that shit i wouldn't have mm-hmm. gotten to know about the movie at all so a large part of it is that and i uh, you mentioned rocky or rani rocky or rani had that whole rocky randhava basically ranveer singh whatever mm-hmm. that that became a meme by itself like yeah. oh like all all because we always look for relatability people start saying oh this is the rocky to my rani and that became a meme template so yeah a lot of it makes sense you make you got to make your films meme worthy but did you think that dune would become meme worthy like i actually had read, yeah, yeah i, I mean yeah. my when you said uh, dune uh, became an event honestly that to me is an outlier right because dune has a very super dedicated but a fairly small base i mean look at the size of those yeah. books how many people are going to read them right and it's and dense Willow, like the first movie i slept yeah the first yeah, movie it's so first dense movie was, it's dense <laughs> and denny villano <laughs> also is not a nolan right i mean to pe- me i don't want to call ourselves cinephiles that sound pretentious as fuck but to people yeah. who like cinema maybe they liquid you know they'll have as much adoration for a villano as a nolan but he's not a mainstream name so he's not going to be pulling people into the theaters dune the source material is not going to be pulling a lot of people into the theaters the fact that it became as successful as it did to me is actually a surprise to be honest it i wouldn't have expected it it's timothy chalamet and zendaya yeah actually yeah that's that's, yeah. that's, that's i feel like zendaya is just like the answer zendaya even but he was barely there in the first film <laughs> in the first yeah, film yeah. he's barely there <laughs> But uh, I'm like, yeah, I, mean, I would say the same goes for like, Challengers, right? It was like, hey, yeah. how much of Zendaya are we going to get to see in no, the movie? No, Challengers, what really, to watch? what really sold Challengers for a lot of people was that initial trailer where, which became a meme, right? Again, funnily enough, once more, the the whole, the trailer where she kind of initiates this uh, make-out session with both, the, with both the leads and it went viral and people, and people went into the movie expecting that and it turned out to be something entirely different. Challengers for me. How much of Zendaya are we going to see in this movie? Exactly right? right, and the Challengers for me was like a wonderful experience. I, I have it is hands down one of my favorite films this, that is, that has come out last Challengers year. Challengers was one of the <laughs> most sexiest films I've watched with the least amount of sex scenes in them. Like I'm like wow. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What? And and uh, most people went into that mentality thinking that's something else. But yeah, if you watch the film, it's something else. Entirely. It is dripping so, in innuendo. Yeah. It works. dripping but like and not obvious it's just yeah. there and like the whole movie works because of that for me but yeah again i think it's because of zendaya that worked cuz uh, i hate to be that guy nobody knew the other two people in the movie like it's unfortunate i, I thought that was the case but apparently that's not it because uh, the no? the guy who plays patrick is do- played king charles on the crown and yeah uh, i mean i know josh yeah. o'connor from the crown crown mm-hmm. yeah, 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 josh o'connor sure uh, again he's, he's had a great year yeah, yeah, but I'm not representative of the larger audience. I'm. I. I'll be free. What is the, the cloud? It's a show about <laughs> oh. the Sikh royal family. Watch yes, it on yes, Netflix. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Very true. Yes. <laughs> anyway, but I mean, uh, but yeah, I mean, coming being... back to the point, I think you need a fulcrum around which your movie can be eventized, yeah. memeified, whatever. Right? You need that. Otherwise. Nobody really yeah. cares for original IP unless you can build it around something. I guess that is the answer. Uh, which yes. obviously the specific answer will vary for each movie, but that is the theme that studios have to now latch on to. Otherwise, it's and, straight to streaming. And generally, I feel like the consensus among uh, among the other side of the uh, of the fence, right, where 
you have industry professionals directors screenwriters who are now clearly having a, to face a scenario where people are are not watching and a lot of the content has that is being made the directive coming from these big streaming platforms that direct where the direct where uh, content goes um, they indicate that it has to be made for ambient viewing or like I, I, uh, I, there's another term for it i used yesterday i don't remember it needs multi screen viewing or something multi screen yes, right. viewing mm-hmm. multi screen viewing which is um, which is again kind of crazy to me so from the kind of people i have sp- spoken to or even like heard uh, suchin who's a good friend of the of the show he has his own show on film companion called um, uh, called the streaming show where he talks to directors and actors about the situation and they mention that every couple of minutes something needs to happen to keep uh, audience attention at an all time high i've said i've sat down with other writers for ott shows here in india like that's i, I i'm familiar with some of those folks and some directors who have promised me that uh they don't like enjoying working with uh, you know any of the streamers why because they have too much intervention and uh, they have been talking about oh your film is not xyz so it has to be built for a multi screen experience it's also with shows so there are actual shows which are filler episodes where people are supposed to not consume it it, it blows my mind but yeah that is unfortunately how it is and uh, now they now everything is so data driven that platforms can actually predict i mean they can't predict fully because then all the shows would be hits and all the films would work but they can predict to some degree whether a particular show would work or not work or at the script level itself so i think all these engineered films right i think a few we mentioned yesterday the one that comes across to me ghosted uh mm-hmm. clearly a film made for multi screen viewing cuz you can watch the cricket match that is going on at the same time as this thing and you'll still not miss anything in this film this a lot this is probably one of the other several action properties that are being that have been built exclusively for streaming right the other that comes to mind that released i think last month is atlas jennifer lopez's atlas which is gone on to become the most viewed movie on netflix ever or has one of the top 10 launches it is a shit show it has 17% on rotten tomatoes both of you look judging by expressions i don't know if both of you even heard of this movie but it's i am just looking at yeah, it yeah yeah it's, it's that that was one and i think the most egregious example of this is the fucking rock movie starring ryan reynolds and gal gadot red notice right oh. which is oh uh, man god yeah i red notice there are so many ryan like, reynolds movies Uh, and uh, Gal Gadot movies, I can't even tell the difference between them. So when you say Red Notice, I'm actually looking up. Yeah, now I know what Red Notice is. Got it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, but basically it's like yeah. yeah, and we've we've kind of addressed this on on prior episodes, especially like the, the hot takes one we, where we spoke about rom coms basically getting shoveled into like streaming because nobody goes to movie theaters to watch them anymore. Uh, I think the yeah. one exception we've mentioned is uh, anyone but you, but because it's the two. leads that people want to see on screen and the drama that unfolded again memes the drama that unfolded before uh leading up to the launch it, it got people interested to going into into screens so it's it's a so very like this for every, for every uh, theatrical release what was the now now my mind is always going to be like what was what did they build it around i'm going to like analyze every theatrical release from this like see line. if they if they did that right like if if actually i mean studios are doing that but it doesn't always work because uh, <laughs> this this one had uh, what movie did you mention again aben anyone, uh, anyone anyone but you that's a sydney sweeney movie right yes yeah, yeah. Huh. Ah. that's it is sweeney so so sydney sweeney was the reason a lot of people would <laughs> want to watch that movie but at the same time there was madam web which was also a sydney sweeney movie yes but people went to like people went to the theaters and i again haven't watched the movie uh, for someone who watches a lot of movies i've managed to skip through a lot of these movies also i mean uh, dakota I, johnson has the charm of cardboard so it's also that yeah yeah that's true that is true that that like no 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 amount of sydney sweeney can change that. yeah <laughs> uh, but but people watch that film as a joke watching thing cuz the trailers and all of that had become so ubiquitous and memes had come out that whatever that line is that something in the amazon 
that people people meme, people meme sony into relaunching morbius they thought oh yeah, yeah. people are making yeah. jokes about it they'll go watch it yeah, yeah fuck off they'll watch jokes. it they're not going to watch it but it's done well on streaming guys madam web is doing <laughs> decently on streaming which is which is goes on to say that people don't watch good movies on streaming necessarily because good movies take attention and they take sometimes you are not in the mood to watch yeah. uh something then so you would watch madam web and watch it with 10 friends or 5 friends or your girlfriend or boyfriend whatever and you'll watch the movie you laugh about the moments in the movie and just go away from it and that is also happening i totally see that I mean, happening the investment right. is low right you're not paying you're not traveling it's it's at home is the equivalent of when you know growing up you would have surya vansham on sony max you're like yeah chal raha hai dekh lete hain perfect example <laughs> that's a perfect that's how we have consumed so many films correct surya vansham yeah. Yeah, Surya Vanshab, Indra the Tiger, which I to this Imagine, day have no idea. Never go to watch Indra the Tiger in theater. Chappal maarenge lo. <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah, no, I think the theaters wouldn't show it, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I honestly think, think I honestly think those movies, those dubbed South Indian films, basically kickstarted the whole seventies action film fad in Bollywood many years later. But that's a conversation for another episode. No, but this yeah, also yeah. dovetails nicely into the the next aspect we wanted to cover, right? Which is whether streaming has increased or democratized access to movies for good and bad, right? Because yes, it has given us access to a law, a whole library of shitty movies that you know we can watch to our heart's content. But it also has given access to a lot of international cinema, which up until stream would have been a lot harder to uh, get get right get at. And this was a point that Aniket had made yesterday, which is that. at least for us growing up when you know during our laptop movie viewing years uh, if yeah. something wasn't in theaters and up until say 5 to 6 years ago not everything was released in india the only other option you had was torrenting right so uh, yeah like monkey man i i i went i felt while watching monkey man i felt like my youth again when yeah. uh, <laughs> went torrented the shit out of that film uh, but uh, yeah it's it's so like i i keep coming back to this loop in my head which is why i brought up that point that i would pay from my pocket to watch a movie a is uh, like something rohit had mentioned that oh there is air conditioning else so either it would be that <laughs> sometimes it's very hot i bunked a class in college so now what do i do i don't know what to do with myself so i'll go watch a movie it's cheap also but today going to a theater is such an expensive freaking expedition especially if you live in a bangalore or a bombay or whatever where you have to like travel in traffic so there's you have to deal with traffic so there's fuel all of that time all that nonsense you go there then you're not going to a movie to watch a movie you're going there to eat popcorn so concessions yeah. like if you end up spending so much money time effort that really needs to be at least bare minimum rocky rani because then you know at least it's cringe so if i'm watching cringe i will go with the cringe set of my friends who appreciate or are cringe themselves so we yeah. will appreciate this movie or we will enjoy this movie come back i won't go to watch rocky rani alone or like mm-hmm. how i went to watch civil war which was not the best idea but uh th- that's generally how film ma- film viewing has happened but the other side of that is a lot of films that have come into theaters and this is where i'm i feel like filmmakers really want their films to go to theatrical and they don't realize that this is a streaming film and it should be in streaming first maybe television after that because more people have accessibility to that uh because i hear this from filmmakers a lot right so the two examples that i could tell you from last year which were films that released this year on streaming that is one was lapata ladies the other not as popular but all india rank which also did much better on streaming because when i went to the theaters varun grover who's directed the film he was appreciating each and every person who had come to watch his movie I felt good and bad at the same time. I'm like, this film deserves so much more, but it's like very few people coming out to watch it in theaters. Same with Lapata Lady. So many moments, entire theater. Wow, what a good movie! But there's like 40 of us in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. You know, ginormous movie theater. The moment it hits Netflix, all your memes start. Or like, yeah. I think that film got discovered by the generation that makes memes because mm-hmm. uh, one of my favorite memes from that is. Uh, looking for my 5 foot shorty in a crowd or whatever that that <laughs> meme i i don't think an older person would have thought of that meme only in the first place but because a younger generation or a, a different set of people i won't call them younger for 
any uh, reason a different set of people got exposed to this particular film they took completely different takeaways from that and they reinterpreted it in different ways as a meme and now yeah. that film is getting rave reviews everyone's like wow what a great film and all the controversy started all of that started all the actors are getting their due again but it released 3 months ago in the theaters or something like a few days yeah. before in the theater but there was media there was like absolute silence on anything there was no one was talking about it as much but then suddenly streaming changed that so i don't think streaming is like for every red notice or whatever they yeah. they do have one of these great films that a lot of people wouldn't have otherwise watched i i genuinely I, feel that i think gen- even like to back of that point right and to talk about the whole torrent thing growing up like we got into the medium of film because we started to discover things and people would share films with us yeah like where would you find i don't even know like if you unless you went to a dvd store and specified to the guy saying i want the the 98 release of fight club on or to own or even like any of the older films like the noir films of the 40s i you don't find them especially in india you don't find them in retail stores so what streaming really did was it opened up a view to a lot of these older films as well as like stuff i mean now we're, we're talking about movies that enter, enter the platform but it it made people a lot more it it definitely made content a lot more accessible but then there's the the downside to it is is when studios decide to kill ips right and there's no physical media of it anywhere westworld exists purely on torrents or on or on like one streaming platform hbo has taken it off their platform because of of rights issues so this the fact that streaming and and physical media is just like i've i've gone two separate ways of streaming is basically punching it into the ground has not only like taken access for a certain uh to to a certain set of films or like even television shows but has also killed an industry where uh, until they figure out the whole the the monetary side of things where the film is unable to make business uh to make more money after its release i think matt damon speaks about it on i think the ringer pod where he talks about the last duel and how these kind of films like the talented mr ripley ripley which is now a huge netflix show they would have mm. never made that movie it would have never had uh, they never they would have never made the show if the movie hadn't existed and if streaming was existed back in the day then there would be no ripley on on any television shows uh, and platform either so he talks about how when people would make money through the dvd industry uh, dvd uh, uh, sales and it would kind of help make them more films knowing the fact that this movie is going to get uh, some money la- later it kept that industry alive it let people take take risks but now with streaming being so data driven the the concept of of trying something out because there's a feeling that it might work is is negated because the data usually is being used to back it up right they're saying we do want to put money into this unless there's a um unless there's a sure shot uh, way of us making some return on it i would look at it another way right uh, slightly differently because uh, what you're saying is because now there are so many metrics uh, that are gates for a, a, an ip to get produced by that logic we should have lesser content out there but that's not the case with what what's happened is we are saying good ip is not able to get past these filters and therefore maybe we get proliferation of good ip has reduced but there are a lot of there's a lot of trash content which does tick these boxes right what are they looking at the like eyeballs it can pull eyeballs it can hold your attention a lot of trash content is uh, passing those gates so maybe it's, it's a question of yes not enough good content is uh clearing the guidelines or you know boxes that streamer streaming platforms want you to tick maybe that's that's the reason why a majority of streaming content is shit right and like you have to find the the gold within all of that guano so democratization comes at that cost uh earlier studios their major filter was is it a good story do we have good characters we had good, good actors and a director to helm this piece if so then we'll make that right now it's like hey we don't care what the quality of it is does it do x y z for our platform then then we we'll, so i think it's not a question of less quality being uh, less uh, content being made it's just less good quality content being made so, are people finishing it basically yeah are people finishing it i just think there's a lot more content just being produced in general 
and yeah. with the number of streaming platforms that we have today that number is like uh, i i went on to geo cinema and i think they have the paramount and the some parts of the hulu library also go hulu is owned by other people elsewhere uh, i saw a new set of shows that i have not heard of before this yeah. so i think just lot more stuff is being made and i think you know we we look at things with a rose tinted glasses and it, we get very nostalgic about the past generally uh there was trash films being made even before it's just that yeah. the amount of trash that's being made now has also like exponentially gone up because of so many people trying to make something good uh oh. a lot of movies that i have watched in the theaters are essentially trash films because i and a lot of movies i watched on hbo and star movies back when streaming wasn't a thing and you would watch a movie on star movies and hbo they were trash as well but yeah. did i enjoy them i loved them and i think that is what has become the thing with streaming that you you can't find that balance like is this just re- replacement for television or is this replacement for like good content and all of that because that's what they position themselves as at least one of the streamers did when they launched in some markets like india they're like oh uh, we will revolutionize the way you know we tell stories and we got sacred games but yeah. then we have reached a point today where we are getting trash reality shows on the same platforms so it's just i think a matter of time and uh, what is the right way to market it at that point of time was probably oh this is a better alternative netflix is whatever this uh, red logo is the better alternative so come on board look at content this way oh now this other blue logo guy is doing indian stuff so we'll do more based in india like more rooted stories and then somehow we got hira mandi but mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 how i generally feel if the people making decisions are people at the end of the day and while a lot of this is data based uh i think the data is being overused at this point to like the data should be on uh, the data should not be describing or pushing people to make films oh so this is what worked so we'll make more of this that clearly didn't work out for all the sequels of the movies that people yeah. have been making for so many years it just doesn't work people get fatigued like how we are going through the whole superhero fatigue right now uh where boys the show that uh, i i i just watched the three episodes recently it's a show that came out at the at the top of superhero fatigue so people are like yeah. wow refreshing that comic book existed for a very long time yeah. before that and was the same answer to the comic books which had you know saturated a smaller set of the market but if you go onto the internet and see the thoughts and uh, even the rotten tomatoes audience rating about boys it's not the same as the other uh, seasons and i'm like wait but only 3 episodes have come out how can people already decide what this show is going to be but that's unfortunately the world we live in and if you give someone some too much of something they're eventually going to say no stop unless it's westworld which I totally agree. Deserves way more, uh, and thank God for Fallout to exist because uh, Westworld had to walk so that Fallout could Fallout become the show it yeah. became. Yeah, hundred percent. But Tiki and the show. boys, uh, since you brought it up, Aniket, I think a lot of the disillusionment with season four also has to do with the fucking cop out, which was the season finale of the third one. I mean, you had Homelander on a plate, and then for some bullshit reason, they decided to team up. I remember, I had for I loved the yeah, show, yeah. right? After the third season, I was like, "Yeah, whatever." Yeah, I agree. To to I I I get it, but it's I'm like, the, it's it's the supernatural situation where yeah, the show just Eric ran Kitty on. Yeah, he has that weird. problem where he just doesn't know when to end the story. Now they've said they're gonna end boys after season five. I'm just like, mm-hmm. every season starts and you end up at like square one. Like it's such a circular. Phenomenon. Like my biggest problem is uh, again we are side tracking, but my biggest problem is why is the show called The Boys when they're the <laughs> least interesting part of that entire freaking show? Yeah. That's not how it is in the comic books. But this show, I'm like, I don't want to see what Huey and uh, uh, the others are doing. Uh, Frenchie is doing here. Just show me more of Homelander and Butcher and their kid Butcher and is, like yeah. it's like yeah, that's it. I don't want to see. I want to see this. long drawn out parental custody battle between superheroes i don't want to see oh i want to show what kimiko is back no nee, i don't yeah, want no, to see that i don't want to give a shit and i, I want more of laser baby it. dude i want scenes like laser baby laser, yeah <laughs> dude do you realize again fully side tracked at this point but 
the biggest thing that the boys pulled off was killing that guy in the first season, that invisible guy, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the film. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing they've been successful at. They've literally failed at everything after that. <laughs> that was where the show peaked. And it didn't work after that. Like, but will I still watch all the other episodes? Of course I will. I will. Yeah. Because I'm an addict. I have sunk cost now. Yeah. Sunk <laughs> cost fallacy. Yeah. Fully. Uh, but yeah, and I mean, we have got... Hmm. Let's go back. Fully yeah. Fully track. Yeah. Let's put it back a little bit. I, I, I want to anyway. just uh, pull on hmm. one thread that Aniket mentioned, which uh, hmm. made me realize now that we have so many platforms, it's like, I mean, talking of going back full circle, it feels like the streaming era is going back to cable TV, right? Now, the whole idea was, hey, we are breaking the cable TV hierarchy and, you know, you're going to have one place where you can watch everything. Now, there are fucking 15 platforms where if I want to watch content, I need to go to their platform. That's and a they fucking come in TV bundles. channel. And now they come in bundles. So, when you when yeah. someone sells you a TV, they're like, hey, we'll give you Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV. So, and I, I had a conversation with, this, with a senior. I hope he's in, in a high paying position. He's like, this was four years ago, four or five years ago. And he said, what do you think is going to happen to streaming? We're going to go down the same route as cable. In four or five years, we'll be paying for bundles. And that's exactly what happened. The moment Disney started bundling Hulu, ESPN together, I, he pinged me on LinkedIn and was like, what did I tell you? <laughs> so, I feel conned, man. <laughs> like, we're back. We're back to square one. But the really hilarious part about all of this, is I don't even think streaming platforms are competing with movie theaters anymore. They're competing with uh, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok to a certain degree. Because that's where people are. Because people are getting content for free. You speak about a, like a, an access to a sea of content. If you're getting free content on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, you, that's where you're going because you get to see so many different things. Especially with TikTok's algorithms, which kind of tracks your eye movement, is what I've been told. It kind of lets you know, which is how it tailors, it kind of understands how you... Um, what kind of content you're interested in because of how long you watch it or what Why what your Chinese are companies like? like this dude like they'll be like asshole bante ne turbo asshole bante <laughs> we'll track their eye movements and like optimize. why are they like this dude? And, and I think this is generally the case. There was, I, there's this kid on the Colin and Samir show, which is a great YouTube show if you're ever interested in the creator economy space. And there's this kid who got on there and he spoke about how he sold he made a short film on YouTube. Which Darren Aronofsky texted him, emailed him, and said, "Can you quit college like tomorrow?" And because I want to produce this, which is insane. Because that story, yeah. And so generally, like I feel like Netflix is or Netflix or the streamers are all competing with those kind of platforms, which is why you've seen an influx of people like going in the other direction, right? Mm. So uh, yeah. what's funny is Netflix, uh, you know, in their in their uh, they're being so brazen about the fact that they don't think they're competing with uh, YouTube and all. Somewhere they mentioned, and I don't remember exactly where, but apparently they're competing with sleep. They don't oh. want you to sleep. They oh want your attention. God. So wow. when a company thinks like that, and you know there is like, they, they will put anything up there to, it's like that Black Mirror episode, which actually was I was, was just Netflix thinking, only. 15 million credits. Exactly like I was that. just thinking yeah. of that. They'll give you exactly what you want to see. And uh, then you are like, but this is not what, this is not real. It's just the Black Mirror episode that's literally happening. And with uh, Gen AI, we are not very far from that. Far from it, it will eventually, yeah, yeah that'll, that's what the streamers will do. But I think with creativity overall as a whole, I think it's uh, generally a space where something, all these streamers have all these metrics, but rightly said, like, when you have YouTube and when you have something as addictive as TikTok and uh, its clones like Instagram Reels and Shots, it's so addictive in a way and it's so like it, it's so ingrained that you might be the like and the, the example is uh, someone older, my mother. She was not used to social media the way we are used to it. Instagram Reels, she just consumes it and she gets her information from Instagram Reels instead of WhatsApp now. So. Uh, we have uh, bridged that, we have crossed that bridge now. And uh, I think we are, that is also the reason you see a lot of these uh, largely popular on the internet people sort of getting cast in films so that they can bring their audience into the movies. One of the big examples in India would be Kusha Kapila. Like, uh, no comment on how, what her acting skills are or all of that <laughs> stuff. I think that's secondary in this, in this case. She may or may not be a great actor, but 
I think a lot of those movies benefited from the fact that, it, like even the controversies, they benefited from the fact that Kusha was in the film and Kusha is this person who plays this character. Nobody would have watched this movie anyway otherwise. But mm. because of that, some ten people on the internet are like, "Oh, look, feminist movie, this, that, all that nonsense they're doing." It, they're doing it because of that one person or two people in the thing, and it's it's helping the film get, uh, you know, like they say, all publicity is good publicity. Like mm. people are hearing about it now uh, on things. So I genuinely think we are at that we are at the era of, uh, streaming where it has become cable, uh, and Jio doesn't even like. Uh, and Jio, not just Jio, like Airtel, Jio, all of them, they're already packaging things. Like, yeah. oh, you get this, this, this. 12 OTTs out of that three are like some weird OTTs and the other two are Netflix, Amazon, whatever. But th that is exactly what cable operators did. Huh? Yeah. All these you'll get, rest are pay channels. So now <laughs> you want more than that. You want like, uh, I don't know, movie or something, you're a cinephile. So you, want movie, <laughs> you pay for movies separately. You don't get uh, this thing. You don't. You you won't get it. But does that mean that good cinema stops? And uh, it is so funny. We are having this conversation right now, and I am willing to bet that most of the films that originated from India. I'm not going to call them Indian origin films because they're not Indian films to begin with. That uh, you know got awarded at the Khan or uh, that that got spoken about that people watched over there willing to bet any of the streamers to pick up any of those films and like release it anytime soon over here. It just doesn't happen. It is so hard. Uh, All That Breeds, the documentary. Yeah. It was on, we, I think it, it was on HBO. It was on HBO, but it wasn't here. It wasn't here. It was after hmm. HBO. I think it went to, or even the new Ravish Kumar film, it went to PBS in the <laughs> US, which yeah. is a public broadcaster, right? I'm, I'm not familiar. Wow. Like it's what are a, the odds? Aniket, I was thinking exactly that. I was thinking of all yeah. the Imagine as light. Like, will all the Imagine all as light we... ever come on any streaming? I highly doubt it. Like, my girlfriend and I were just talking about this the other day. Like, all these filmmakers make fantastic films, usually about marginalized people in India. Yeah. And then those people are never going to watch the film. Forget them. <laughs> the audience that watches such films also don't get to watch these films, unless they're pirating yeah. or something. Like, everyone who has watched, uh, what is that? Monkey Man. Monkey Man, right? Yeah, yeah Monkey, Man Monkey Man in India. Man. You watched it illegally. You've not watched it yeah. in any fair I way. I felt like a vigilante people. when I was watching it. Yeah. I think I gave more credibility to the film because of the way I watched it. I'm like, oh, this is uh, illegal. So this film is amazing. Yeah, then when yeah. I yeah. Bank it, I must try. Like, <laughs> ah, must try. Like, that is the way I got into the film. So I don't know what, like streamers, for all the good that they're doing, they're so driven by what the audience is yeah. used to, but the audience will like junk. No, you give anyone McDonald's, they'll not say, Are this is giving me it's a vicious uh, whatever. Yeah, you give them junk, they, they like junk, you give them more junk, it's just like singularity. Yeah, and then they junk. explode and die. <laughs> 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 and then they uh, elect Donald Trump to the anyway, that's getting <laughs> political, I would say that. But yeah, that that is unfortunately the case. And uh, a lot of my friends work in you know, decision making powers that these platforms. And I sometimes like on one of my rants, I just say like, oh, you're producing shit. So obviously, why do you think anyone will watch? And then they offhand mention numbers or things. And it, it is a very vicious cycle again. Because when a uh, few years back, some violent show really worked on these streamers, everyone has their own violent show. Then yeah. some other show works, everyone has the same show. So they have data points, but the data points are also like not telling the whole story. Because... Who's watching these shows? Who's watching these films? Uh, like, nobody could have put streaming, like, Challengers, as a film, since we mentioned that, without Zendaya, if someone put that on streaming, except for a few people who might really be into the uh, director's previous work, I, yeah. again, really find it challenging that anyone would watch that film, even on streaming. But today, the moment it drops on streaming, if it hasn't already, I have no idea. Uh, people are going to watch it. The memes will come back into the... Yeah. In, in, like, my top moment was when somebody made the challengers meme with the Indian political situation after the elections with Nitish Kumar and this thing. They, they made that. Oh. I'm like, okay, this movie has traveled. I'm like, okay, yeah. this movie has fully traveled. That's that's when you know the movie has worked in so many ways. And I'm like, wow, this has happened. Uh, but yeah, remove Zendaya from that and that you don't get those memes anymore. No one cares. In light of what all this... 
yeah. coming back to our, our the last question right what is what are our hopes and our expectations uh, for, uh, from what streaming will do for indian cinema in the future i'm sure hopes and expectations are going to be wildly different but yeah and the future i think the future part of it was something that we discussed really well yesterday yeah okay yeah uh you guys go i'll take some time cuz i made some points this time <laughs> let <laughs> Don't a ramble, yeah. Go on. Okay. No, I don't know. Uh, okay, let me go first, right? So hope yeah. is what we discussed, right? Movies like all we imagine is right. Movies like uh, what was the elephant one? That uh, elephant whisperers. Elephant, elephant whisperers. whisperers. Fucking mm. beautiful movie, right? Mm. Hope is that more of these movies, which are made about groups that aren't usually in focus, uh, get a wider release. People get to see because. among other things that is what cinema is supposed to do right it is like travel uh, it's supposed to broaden your horizon it is supposed to make you compassionate it is supposed to put you in the shoes of people in whose shoes you otherwise wouldn't be right it is supposed to make you a, a nicer person who is able to accept and you know assimilate different points of view and all of this the vicious cycle that we spoke about these eco chambers are only making us hardened in our opinion better and exposing us to different sort of sort of movies is what we are saying it democratizes access it should democratize this uh it or it should allow us access to this wider range of movies that's the hope the expectation is there's going to be a, a dustbin of crap sorry I, i don't have much to say on the expectation bit i think yeah i think generally the hope with with regards to this is that more i feel like it opens up the playing field not everyone tries to like for follow the same trope which has happened especially in bollywood cinema for so long right where there'll be one big hit and then suddenly there'll be about 20 clones that come out of it and then it'll it'll just keep going it happened with the 70s action film uh, reboot it happened with the heartland stories because right now at the moment i see a, an actually I, i don't even give heartland stories um, a chance anymore because so much of it has come out i do want to engage in these all stories all because of mirzapur Mirzapur came because Gangs of Wasipur came here. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Gangs of Wasipur is so OG. You're right. OG, and then it just filtered down to everything. Yeah, I, I feel just because, just because of the inundation of all these tropes that you tend to miss out on a lot of these good films, and which would otherwise be like communal experiences, right? Now I feel like the only communal experiences that we have are tenfold star films like Shah Rukh or. Uh, if uh, or salman movie salman i think not so much he's been on the way in for some time i'm sure there are people there's an audience that likes his films but shahrukh definitely felt like watching uh, you know um, a, a, a being part of a communal experience not even going to address the nationalist cinema that has come out over the last few years that is the biggest problem with fucking in this with with uh, with theatrical releases these days anyway but the whole i would like for the communal experience to be maintained because it's what makes certain films what they are right like especially like you take genres of film you take noir for example noir works in a living room it works across in most places but the experience is heightened when you're watching it in a movie theater which is why when i watched merry christmas last year or like earlier this year i was like it you could feel the tension building and crashing and again amping up in the in the cinema and that that kind of enhances your experience people who watched knives out 2 in theaters loved it people who watched it at home weren't exactly big fans because you you take the element of of tension out the way uh, that that communal tension out the out the window so my hope is that there's able to be there is like streamers kind of understand that that you can make content for everyone it doesn't necessarily have to be high budget focus more on stories people will watch good shit it will eventually take off but also keep in mind that the theater is where people go to like have a good time like like let's not lose that experience yeah. nice nice mm. right so i genuinely believe that going to the movie theater is still an experiential thing and more so post uh, the great pandemic of 2020 we look forward to such communal experiences and i don't want to be that guy to blame the audience if they just want to have fun while going for those experiences because it's an expensive affair it's not cheap uh, it takes a lot of effort uh, to do these things so it's kind of ludicrous to even assume that people would go and watch very dense very difficult cinema 
in the theaters and uh, filmmakers should be aware of that having said that i also believe that just cuz we are such a ginormous country we have the largest population in the world there are enough number of people who would also be interested in watching different cinema cinema that makes you think and they could be like dedicated like maybe netflix and amazons of the world could get into like doing special screenings and special things where oh great we will make an event viewing experience out of different kinds of movies like if there is a really cool i don't know auteur film that's coming out and you really want to watch it like maybe something that went to khan this year cool these are the time slots these are the times then people who really want to watch it will try to make it and people who don't get to watch it and wanted to watch it will sort of regret it so they will not miss the next time that's how mm-hmm. you build a habit but today if you just like you need to like slowly start seeding in that salad with your junk food if i can use that uh, comparison cuz if you're just feeding people junk they will not know anything else at all and unfortunately i feel that because theatrical has already gone that way it was always that way it has become more solidified in that way where it's all the big picture big explosions big storylines all of that's happening streaming was still a space where fun little small stories were being told like i really loved the episode uh, you guys where you spoke about the rom coms uh, i miss rom coms i miss i miss the stoner comedies i miss the dumb yes. comedies that yeah. judd apatow used to make every other year like i really miss those films and whatever streaming has done to judd apatow now i saw his recent work it is trash i would not watch it so i miss those older films which worked only because uh like i don't know which one of you said this but because dvd sales was a thing mad demon said this not you guys yeah. sorry <laughs> uh, uh sorry i got that co- across so such hand- handsome looking people that's why uh but anyway the dvd sales was such a big thing that you would want to make movies like that which you know you could have that repeat viewing experience and i watch a lot of those films even today like 10 15 years later i'm still watching that and i'm like ah, it's funny it's a dumb movie i'll watch it but i know exactly what i'm watching so i genuinely feel that today if the streamers and this is eventually going to happen which is why i'm not too fussed about it because eventually streamers will have to differentiate from the like art trash can't look the exact same as your trash so whenever <laughs> everyone's trash starts looking the same they will have to differentiate to tell them that oh our trash is slightly better this happened mm-hmm. with television the reason that hbo shows are so good is because they have been good for like okay not all hbo shows but most hbo shows are good because they someone at hbo took the decision that we want to stand out from the crowd we will have a smaller audience but we will make prestige yeah. television or prestige series uh that that is slowly happening uh in the west you know your a24 as a studio is trying to do a lot of that I, a lot of it is pretentious i agree i see through it but i think there will be more a24s around the world eventually making more films and when there are such films made there's definitely an audience for it there are a lot of uh, i think cinephile culture has never been as big as it is right now because of yeah. the internet because of the same reasons young kids are making content about films that have released when their parents weren't born this wasn't a thing when i was their age like 20 i mean 10 years ago uh in my 20s that this wasn't a thing like we were always talking about like if you spoke about an older film people would just zone out right now people are talking about trofo and french new wave and all that and it's becoming more and more mainstream on instagram uh i genuinely am ha- I'm, i'm a positive person in though i sound very cynical i generally have po- a positive outlook and i believe that market forces enable or disable or force people to doing things and when people will start looking for the different kind of content right or the uh, people hate the word content but different kind of media that they want to consume maybe it's not going to be on streaming uh, unless you count youtube but maybe some youtube filmmaker is going to make some insane shit that people are like oh he put it up for free on youtube i'm going to watch it there and that's how yeah. that guy like how he said darren aronofsky gave him that uh, movie making deal more of that stuff is going to happen i think more streamers who are dedicated uh, to making or showing interesting films will come up because now that we are going the channel way if it's tv channels again someone will need to make a specific channel for the few of us that do exist and i think it's a lot of us now it's not a few of us so i am very positively looking for that but from mainstream platforms uh i think they can do better they mm-hmm. will probably not do better as rohit said 
because it's mm-hmm. uh, whatever fire dumpster fire but uh, they can do better there's so much potential there's so many stories that could have been told i don't want to see the same production houses if anyone from any uh, platform is hearing and wants our out, uh, output on this i don't want to see more of the same production houses give that youtube kid who's making insane stuff and by that yeah. i don't mean tvf i mean uh, generally a youtube kid or an instagram reels kid who's doing really good stuff let them make a film for you it's going to cost a lot less and you know you're not going to lose a lot of money on it instead of you know paying your biggest stars to do something that people enjoy as uh, what multi screen experiences that's <laughs> i think that's just the future i don't want to be i'm not very happy with that outcome yeah. yeah associated with yeah that, that's just not sad. that's kind of sad so that's a very level headed take and surprisingly positive i i think it's a nice note to like wrap you know yeah bring this all uh, full circle and sort of encapsulate this episode we expect shit but we hope for much better <laughs> let's put it that way is streaming bad no it is not no, is it, it is good not. it can be better it can, it can be, be better. way better but who decides people with money so the next time before any of us complains or any of you complain about things talk about like i think people are not vocal about it like just tell people tell go tag netflix and tell them that this sucked or tag whoever yeah. amazon netflix is just a name tell them that something sucked they i know people who work on the other side they are listening they are listening uh it's just that they have bosses to answer to and those bosses are unfortunately not on the internet probably that's why <laughs> like this. so i mean you should at least send, it will we should at least send them to movie theaters i feel like feel like you had you described this i mean the, the whole feeling right like i i this is something we spoke about yesterday and i kind of hope wanted to bring this back bring it back to it about watching Uh, you were it was it mommy 2014 or 2018 with uh, interstellar it wasn't mommy it wasn't anything i think uh, they were just doing a christopher nolan retrospective in bombay for whatever reason and uh, i got the opportunity to watch interstellar on 35 mm and uh, it was in one of these older art deco movie theaters here in mumbai so and i did not know this and uh, i was quite surprised that christopher nolan was in the audience and This was Interstellar a film at that point of time which was already a few years old so most people in the audience had already watched it but the collective experience of watching it again and this time with the guy who whose brain this has come out of I think that was a uh, completely like that, one of my core memories if I can quote uh, inside out one of my favorite films uh, it's one of my core memories that I can never get over that th- this wasn't a film I was too fond of initially because I found so many flaws with it and this and that but to watch all of those people sit down watch this particular film and then to see christopher nolan meeting an indian audience and people who are jumping on this uh, seats and like gasping and sh- uh, hooting when the the dog thing happens and when the dog thing happens they're just gasping people cheering hooting throughout the film i don't know if that's a thing he sees every day when he goes to a movie theater so that was an experience where i was a little faith in humanity filmmaking everything just got restored that day uh as i said things p- people will like people keep saying that things are bad but things are always not that bad and it's never good things are never good mm-hmm. but it's <laughs> never always that bad it, there is some it's hope the, it's the sweet spot there how to simultaneously be optimistic and pessimistic like you sir <laughs> uh, optimism then you're forced to be optimistic <laughs> otherwise what's the point yeah <laughs> Yeah, but, but uh, yeah. That, does that mean Christopher Nolan the good film and Oppenheimer apart from these two gents here? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. I hate that shit. But yeah, I see the point of that film. Like I, I think I watched it again recently, and uh, I see the point of that film. Would I have watched it in the theater if it wasn't for Barbenheimer? No, I would have still watched yeah. it. I would have watched it. Dude, it's all meme. Someone is doing a back to back of Oppenheimer and Godzilla minus one. <laughs> and I was like you know what before and after yeah, before and after that that's like a good on them with, yeah culture well, a little bit double feature they're having more of a political discourse than christopher nolan wanted to have so good on them yeah, yeah. sure <laughs> i want to be in japan when uh, christopher no- when oppenheimer actually released much later i want to just see what people felt about it and most people were so nice about the thing they just said it's a bad film because it's not like their feelings were not attached to the fact that this is showing such a dark part of the history 
a lot of the feeling was just whether it's a good film or a bad film like some people came out saying it's a bad film some people say it's a good film mm. but it was only other people on the internet who were going so ham on the whole political discourse around the film dude like yeah. that was just wild unrelated but i want to be there when that happened that's what i thought i'll say it go on end right. the episode that is <laughs> we are we are here at the end my friend we've uh, we've had a, a lot, we've had two extremely fun episodes that's the thing right and i think both will live in some capacity in, in on, on on platforms i will make sure that happens because it's really such fun patreon 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 <laughs> patreon <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes sir the floor is yours please tell the folks what you've been up to uh, what's happening and uh, where they can find you yeah of course i uh, if you have heard me on this episode and would want to hear more from me or see this amazing face go follow me mm-hmm. at aniket d that's a n i k e t d on instagram <laughs> and uh, i also serve trivia pop and make these did you know videos on instagram <laughs> and youtube uh, that's hyper curious club and also don't forget to follow these two amazing folks on this amazing podcast follow the podcast guys you should do that and uh, i would love to see you at the movies after this please I go to the see. movie theaters <laughs> please go there well played yes guys please follow share like subscribe to the pod it helps us it helps me sleep it it, it makes rohit give me like motivation to do things So it's just one of those things. So let's. Wait, wait. It makes Rohit give me motivation. That's very convoluted. Very, very cool. No. I love Whatever that. Is. I don't need random internet strangers to motivate you, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> you motivate me is what I'm trying to say. I'm like this. Oh, okay. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> please, please but, put more likes on this, please. Please, yes. <laughs> Let us look at our beautiful faces. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, That's us for this week's episode, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Aniket will definitely be back for more. Uh, I'm sure. Yes. I will yes. leave his links in the description for all of you to check out. This is Thank one you. of I have I have sent four different episodes coming out of this to- podcast alone. It will happen. Don't worry. <laughs> we should tell us what we should talk about. Yeah. Just let us know wherever. Let us know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. We'll we'll see you guys. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye.